what is going on my online poker players now i've got another good update for all of you aspiring to play online poker for a living you know i get this question all the time about if i play for a living and i don't but i do have pretty good insight based on my own data of what you could expect to make taking this game more seriously and i would say you know playing 500 no limit would be the stake you would want to start at if you're looking to make around ten thousand per month now you can play lower than that like one two no limit you know online multi-tabling two tables at a time but based on my own data this is over five plus years guys you know you can make around at two to six thousand max playing 40 hours a week at like 200 no limit if you're a winning player now when you boost things up to 500 no limit you definitely can clear 10k per month playing two tables at a time if you're a winning player but keep in mind there's going to be variance within this so you're going to end up losing a few buy-ins every once in a while etc it's just part of the game when you're always playing and seeing you know tens of thousands of hands but i hope that gives you guys an idea of the volume and time needed to make somewhat more serious money playing online you know, the reality is you got to put in the time you know and yeah i mean uh that could be an issue for a lot of us out there but you know my approach to playing online poker and i always say this guys you know i play because i love the competition i love you know trying to outplay people and you know i just love the challenge of it um, but you know, really, uh, I think playing part-time while you're doing other things is the best way to approach online poker. You know what I'm saying? You know, playing these cash games, playing a big tournament every once in a while, see if you can win like a, you know, a huge payout doing it that way. But, you know, playing like 40 hours a week, it's not going to be ideal unless you're trying to like really do this. Then, um, I just hope that gives you kind of like an idea. So, once again, you know, if you're playing one to no limit, 40 hours a week, let's say you're playing two tables at a time, you know, you could expect any, to make anywhere from like two to 6,000 a month if you're a winning player. But when you boost it up to 500 no limit, that's when the money becomes, you know, a lot better, obviously. You could definitely clear 10K per month if you're a winning player. You know, the caveat, though, is if you're a winning player, right? That's really what I'm getting at here. Not everybody's going to be. Um, okay, uh, and now onto this session, which was played on Bovada Poker. You know, I did manage to get a nice win in this one, and Bovada right now is still one of the top sites to be playing on, in my opinion. I've been using them for over 10 years for playing poker and betting on sports. Of course, if you guys would like to check them out as well, there will be some bonus links you can check out directly below in the description. You can also get on our poker newsletter where we send out one email a week on hand analysis and tips to help you guys make more money at the tables. Please tap that like and let's get into these freaking hands. Now, I didn't play perfect in this one. Um, we are going hand for hand here, but we still managed to, you know, kind of grind out a nice profit for playing for you know, less than like 45 minutes, um, you know, on the day, which is good. Uh, but I did not play perfect, so don't judge me too hard in this one. I definitely should have been a little bit more aggressive in certain spots. I always say this too, you know, when whenever you're you, you start an online poker session and you know you're sitting there for like twenty to thirty minutes, you kind of start to get an idea if people are playing super passive or super aggressive. You always need to be adjusting to the table, right? You want to be playing your own game, but at the same time, you got to pay attention to what other people are doing. And for the most part. You know, these players were all playing pretty solid poker, but, you know, we got into a couple spots where, you know, things just kind of worked out for us, and that's just how it goes sometimes. The poker gods, you know, were on our side on this day. All right, so here we're at King 7 in the small blind. You know, raising is usually the approach for everybody who folds. I mean, you can limp. I probably limped a little bit too much in this one, honestly. Now, I waited this guy for him to make his decision. And if he was going to raise, this is probably a fold. If I've got an A7 offsuit, I'll make a call here. Sometimes I might even three bet it. It just depends. Uh, it just depends. But... Um, I opted just to uh, make a call here. I should have raised. I really should have. This guy's going to check. So him checking just tells me his hand's not very strong either. But we did pair the king. Okay, so we have a pair of kings here, top pair. Very strong. Very uh, unlikely this guy has a king. And You know, I'm okay checking this, but he bet. All right, so I made the call. Turn card. Put a heart out there. 
doesn't really change a whole lot. Now he checked it all the way to the river, um, but decided to put in <laughs> put in a bet here. You know, obviously I was never gonna fold to this. He bet like thirty bucks. Definitely felt like he was trying to buy it. Um, and you know, actually by us not raising that one preflop, maybe I won a little bit more than I would have. Um, who knows, right? But yeah, sometimes you just gotta let a player just bet in you and try to bluff you, and then you just kind of like you're like okay, like I'll take it. Now, I can't tell you guys why I didn't raise with the queen 10 right here. I guess I just had a superstition or something, but I should have definitely raised right there. Okay, there's just no doubt about it. All right, let's say I did. if I did raise, um, you know, not looking too great for us, so maybe, um, <laughs> maybe just folding this hand was the play. Right, let's see that river card. Hopefully it's not the jack. Now we'd have paired the queen. But yeah, um, continue sticking around with me, guys, because, I mean, uh, we also hit quads in this one. I mean, we have a lot of interesting hands to go over for sure. And I am going to be giving you guys my thought process on, you know, every situation really here. Now, I do say this quite often, you know, small pocket pairs, when you're, you know, like first or second to act or early to act, limping's okay, uh, every once in a while, you know, this is, it's tricky. I could have raised with this. Um, I'm kind of glad I didn't because look at this flop. We got an ace king, eight, uh, fours is just not looking very good right here. So, all right, 10 on the turn. I'm kind of just in check fold mode at this point. And really impossible to continue here. Unless I wanted to turn my hand into a bluff, I guess I could have done that. But he, that guy was playing solid. He was up like 500 bucks. So, you know, I'll just give it to him. All right, next hand we just folded this garbage. Folding the garbage. Now, this was interesting. Um, this hand was playable. Or it's, I mean, it is playable. But I decided I didn't want to see a flop with it. Normally I would. But like I said, I played a little bit different in this one. And on to the next one. All right, folded the queen nine. I guess I just wasn't feeling the queen hands because we folded queen four suited, queen nine, queen ten. You know, I guess I was just a little bit superstitious in this one. All right, another fold. So somewhat playing a little bit tighter than I would usually play. All right, got to fold that seven deuce, man. Goodbye, seven deuce. All right, another hand that I should have been raising with, but once again, I just limped. I guess I was hoping maybe this guy would get aggressive with it. He didn't. And uh, turn card was interesting. It did put the nut flush draw out there, but at this point, me and this guy are just checking it back and forth. So that was a terrible river card. Um, I just let him have it. All right, so here we go with pocket jacks. This hand was ridiculous. Okay, so I open raised here which obviously you got to do. This is also a three bet situation for sure. Or no, I'm sorry. I just called, right? All right, my bad. I should have three bet this. And like I said, guys, don't judge me too harsh in this one. 
Um, I was playing a little bit too tight, but when you flop quads, I mean, come on, man. That is that is something right there. All right, so I'm just hoping somebody puts a bet out there, which um, this guy is going to put a bet out there. All right, so once again, just going to slow play this because I'm really hoping the guy to my left is going to make a call. That's what I'm hoping for. All right, river card was a deuce, which, uh, you know... Now, clearly, I'm still hoping this guy has a big hand, right? He bet out like $70, so I had a couple options here. I decided, like, and I wish I didn't do this now that we're running it back. I got greedy. I got super greedy here. You know, I guess I was hoping he had pocket nines or pocket tens or maybe like a, a flush, like the ace high flush or something. I don't know. But I got greedy. I should have just kicked this up to like, 200 would have been a better play i think i don't know if he would have called honestly but i got greedy i'm gonna come over the top here i think i just got excited that i had quads <laughs> i don't know what else to say guys all right so that wasn't exactly well thought out on my part i, I got greedy okay we've all been there before So next hand I folded, but uh, yeah, continue sticking around, guys, because um, we do have a, you know, a much uh, a, another big hand coming up here. All right, folded the king Jack-10 in the big blind, definitely not a bad hand to have here. All right, so I defended. We're looking for a queen. All right, not a terrible card, honestly. I mean, it does give us up an up and down straight draw. Of course, we didn't get there. All right, I went with the bluff. Um, I guess it wasn't a big enough bet. Hard to know if I would have went bigger if he would have called, but, you know, I still took a stab at it. It didn't work. And really, you know, if we're looking at everything so far, I haven't really bluffed a whole lot. So, you know, we got caught right there with the, I guess it didn't make a lot of sense. But I mean, you know, I wasn't going to win that uh, if I didn't do something. All right, 9-4. It's going for the muck, or it's going into the muck. But, um, you know, the hand <clears throat> that is going to kind of like really help us out in this session is pocket four. So, we, you know, we had pocket fours, what, once already. It didn't work out for us, but fours will be coming up again here. And uh, that's where we kind of got like max value. Yeah, 
All right, 167 in this pot. Let's see if this guy goes for another bet. I have no idea what either of these guys has. All right, ace queen took it down. Nice one. All right, folded the seven nine. All right, here we go with pocket fours. You know, I slowed this one down a little bit. So, you know, we could talk about it. All right, so once again, we have a pocket pair, very low pocket pair. We're early to act. And, you know, I say this all the time, guys. These small pocket pairs, when you're first or second to act, you can limp, okay? It's, you don't have to. You can raise if you want. The problem is getting three bet when you have these type of hands is tough. Because you don't want to invest too much money, you know, in a, like pocket threes or deuces or fours or fives, really. Now, this guy bet $30. Okay, pretty big one. Um, but we spiked it. So we hit the set, and I'm just here licking my lips, hoping this guy's got, like, ace, king, pocket aces. Hopefully just not pocket kings, right? That would be pretty sick. Uh, but we're not going to be thinking like that. Um, so continuing here, he checked it. I don't know if he was doing like a sneaky check or what that was all about. All right, but I'm building the pot here. And like I said, the hands I'm really targeting here, pocket aces and ace king, that's what I'm targeting. I don't know if pocket queens would make that call. Maybe. Maybe. But the river card was a really good one. Doesn't really change anything. I know we've got this guy beat. He doesn't know it. Um, and I had to figure out what sizing I wanted to go with here. Uh, we also would have missed all the flushes and straight draws basically here. I mean, for the most part. I mean, what, 5-7, but that's not it. Uh, so me betting this amount, I think it looks like a bluff. Okay, so if you got ace-king pocket aces maybe even pocket queens maybe he makes this call that's what i was thinking and that's the reason i put this sizing out there now he's gonna let the clock run down a little bit on this um and uh he's gonna think about it all right we got we got paid off right there um anyways Bringing this all together, um, hope you guys enjoyed another session here. You know, like I said, if you're looking to take this game more seriously, the thing is it's going to require a lot of your time. You know, I think the best approach is to kind of play part-time, see if you can beat in certain stakes. Uh, 200 no limit, 500 no limit, you can go up to 1,000 no limit if you want to try that, but games get harder up there. Um, and really, you know, just keep working on your game and just see what happens. Just don't put too much pressure on yourself is all I'm saying. Uh, of course, too. I guess to get on that newsletter, guys. We'll have those uh, links below in the description once a week for that. Um, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next poker video.